this part of the course, we are going to talk about carbon-13 NMR applied to polymers and the problems of the quantitative analysis. The main advantage of the use of carbon-13 NMR is that the chemical shifts are spread over 200 ppm, while the proton resonance are concentrated in 10 ppm. This makes a significant difference in the resolution. Other advantage is that the, the coupled carbon-13 spectra are simpler due to the absence of coupling, but there is also some disadvantage as the low sensitivity due to two factors. The low and natural abundance of carbon-13 isotope, that is 1.1% of the total carbon atoms, and the carbon-13 magnetic moment that is smaller than the proton one, by a factor of about four, being the proton magnetic moment 2.29 and the carbon-13 0.70 Erg Gauss. As the sensitivity are proportional to magnetic moment power 3 at a fixed magnetic field, the carbon is less sensitive than proton by a factor of 64. Another disadvantage of carbon-13 NMR is that it is not quantitative unless special conditions are used. Although this disadvantage, carbon-13 NMR is very important for the study of polymers because it led to obtain some data that it cannot be seen by proton NMR, especially in polymers that do not contain functional groups or different kind of carbons, like aliphatic and aromatic, in the same molecule. So, which data we can obtain by carbon-13 NMR that cannot be seen by proton NMR? For example, type in, um, in amount of branching in polyolefins, distribution of comonomers in a chain, that means comonomer sequences that let you know if a copolymer is in block, random, or alternated, determination of regio and stereo regularity in polyalpha olefins, determination of reactivity radius in a copolymerization, determination of polymerization mechanism. But to obtain all this data, we have to understand first why carbon-13 NMR is not quantitative and how we can resolve it. The pulse sequence in NMR is composed by a pulse of radio frequency to excite the nuclei spin from a state of lower energy to an excited state and that has an angle and a time that can be programmed. An acquisition time, that is the time in which the free induction decay or fit is collected in a digital form on the computer. And a relaxation delay, that is the time during which the nuclei relax to restore the equilibrium population in both spin states. The optimization of the instrumental parameters should let us to have a, a spectrum with good resolution and sensitivity. The following equation relates the acquisition time with the spectral width and the memory size. For example, if you have a memory size of 16K and a spectral width of 10,000 Hz, the acquisition time should be of 0.8 seconds. To have a good sensitivity, that means a high signal noise radio, the acquisition time should be equal to the half field decay time. The values of acquisition time obtained by this method may not be close to that required by the resolution. When both the sensitivity and resolution are important, it should be reach a compromise. Once you have chosen the best acquisition time, it is possible to choose the pulse angle for a given relaxation time using the Ernst equation. Thus, for example, for an acquisition time of 0.8 seconds and a relaxation time of 1.5 seconds, the pulse angle should be 70 degrees. If in addition of a good resolution and sensitivity is necessary to obtain a quantitative spectrum, 
there are other parameters that must be taken into account. One of the reasons why carbon-13 NMR is not quantitative is that the relaxation times are quite long. That means that the carbon spin nuclei take more time than proton spin to achieve the equilibrium given by the Boltzmann distribution. If a second pulse is given before the nuclei achieve equilibrium, the spectrum is not quantitative. It was established that for a molecule to have a quantitative carbon spectrum, it is necessary to apply a relaxation or pulse delay of five times the relaxation time of their carbon atoms for a pulse angle of 90 degrees. So, if a carbon atom has a relaxation time of 1.5 seconds, the relaxation delay should be of 7.5 seconds. The problem is that long acquisition times and relaxation delays increase enormously the time of an NMR analysis. Other of the problems of carbon-13 NMR quantitative analysis is the variation in relaxation times of different carbons. For example, the relaxation times in seconds of an ethylene one exine copolymer with 3% of one exine was calculated and it can be seen that the relaxation time of the methyl carbon of the branch is 7 seconds, while most of the carbons of the chain are less than 2 seconds. To obtain a quantitative spectrum of this copolymer using a pulse angle of 90 degrees, we should use a relaxation delay five times the longest relaxation time, that is seven seconds. This will give a relaxation delay time of 35 seconds. This will increase enormously the time to acquire an spectrum, especially if we consider that in carbon 13, sometimes to have a good signal noise, we should make more than a thousand scans. Another solution is to use paramagnetic substance such as chromium acetyl acetonate to force the spin re to relax by another mechanism, but we have to be careful of not using too much because at high concentration it can increase the line width, decreasing the resolution. Another difficulty to obtain a quantitative carbon-13 NMR is the variation in nuclear overhauser effect, NOI. Most of carbon-13 spectra are obtained the couplet from the proton because they simplify them. NOI is derived from the carbon-13 proton decoupling and is a good effect in the sense that the signal noise ratio increases till three times. But the problem is that this increase is not always linear. The solution is to use the mode inverse gated decoupling. In this mode, the decoupler is turned on during the pulse and the acquisition time is turned off during the relaxation delay. That gives a spectrum without noise which also means without increase of sensitivity. Most of researchers prefer to maintain NOI even in quantitative analysis because the gain in intensity of the signal sometimes compensates the loss of the integral precision. In general, difference in NOI in polymers are not so important as in small molecules. There is a very interesting work done by Andrensen and co-workers. They acquired the spectrum of ethylene one octene copolymer without NOI and with NOI. They found that NOI increased the signal noise radio in 2.5 and reduced the analysis time in a factor of 6.3, as it can be seen in the table. They also studied the influence of the magnetic field in the relaxation times T1. The increase of magnetic field produces the increase of the relaxation times for all the types of carbon, but this increase is not so significant. In the next table, they studied the effect 
of the use of relaxation agent, chromium triacetylacetonate, on relaxation times T1. It can be seen in all cases how the relaxation time decreases with increase of the paramagnetic substance. They change the concentration of chromium ACAC till the concentration of 80 millimolar. Because greater than this value began to influence the line width. They ve verified that more diluted concentration of polymer, 8%, did not improve resolution. The total time of a scan is the sum of the acquisition time and the time delay. If we use as relaxation delay five times the highest relaxation time without chromium acetylacetonate, that is 10.59 seconds, plus the acquisition time of 1.8 seconds, the time of a scan will be of 54.7 seconds. Using the paramagnetic substance with a concentration of 80, the relaxation time decreased to 0.97 seconds. So multiplying by 5 plus 1.8, the time of a scan will be reduced to 6.6 .6 seconds. That means that the scan time was reduced by a, by a factor of 8.2. They also studied the integral values of two ethylene one octane copolymers with amount of one octane of 19.4 and 5.6 mole percent. The integral of most of the carbon resonance were not affected by the use or not of NOE. But the use of NOE resulted in an underestimation of integral values of the spectral region between 28 to 31 ppm and it was most pronounced at low concentration of 1 octene. So, as conclusion of these studies, we can say that the use of NOE is beneficial because led to acquire an spectrum in a reduced time. The use of paramagnetic substance reduced significantly the relaxation time and consequently the time of the analysis but the amount used cannot be superior to 80 millimole. The influence of the magnetic field on the relaxation time is not significant. In another work done by our research group, we studied the percentage of sequences and the amount of each comonomer in an ethylene propylene copolymer with a high amount of propylene. This type of polymer is only soluble at high temperature. We studied first the influence of the analysis temperature. We used 90, 130, and 140 centigrades and calculated the percentage of sequences using the integrals. As it can be seen in the table, the percentage of all the sequences and comonomers differ significantly. This suggests that the polymer was completely soluble only at 140 degrees. This kind of copolymer made by Ziegler Nata Catalis has a high comonomer distribution, and it is possible that it has chains of polypropylene homopolymer with high molecular weight that do not dissolve below 140 degrees. We also study the influence of the number of scans. Comparing the last three columns, there is not a significant difference between 960, 1,600, or 4,000 scans. Normally, when the signal to noise is reasonable, there is not further difference in the inter integrals. In the last columns, the NMR solvent was also changed, but the result was the same. We concluded in this study that the temperature of analysis is extremely important. We have to remember that in polymers, we have, in general, a distribution of chains of different molecular weights, and in the case of copolymers, different comonomer distribution. As well, in liquid NMR, it is necessary that the sample be completely dissolved to have a quantitative analysis. It is worth to remember also that the NMR result 
is an average of the whole sample. To have an, Im an improved approach, it will be necessary to fractionate the sample by other techniques, such as TREF or CRISTAF, and then to make an NMR of each fraction. In a work done by Hansen and co-workers, they studied the accuracy of the integrals of an ethylene propylene copolymer spectrum. They used a solvent, orthodichlorobenzene, a temperature of 130 degrees, a pulse angle of 30, an acquisition time of 3 seconds, a pulse delay of 10 seconds with no E, a number of scan of 500, an analysis time of one hour, and each analysis was done six times. Here we can see a spectrum of ethylene propylene copolymer with eight integral regions without overlap that they name from A to H. Many authors prefer to use regions of the spectrum to take their integrals instead of the integral of each peak to avoid overlap errors. In Table 1, they listed the integrals obtained from each region for the six experiments. In the last two lines, they show the result of the average values of the integrals and the standard deviation. The error uh, in the smallest integrals is close to 10%, and in the biggest is less than 5%. They used two methods to calculate the percentage of each sequence from the integrals. In method A, they only use some integrals. In method B, they use equations in which they incorporate the contribution of all integrals. In table 3, they showed the result of the molar fraction of each sequence calculated by method A and B and the standard deviation of each value. Both methods gave good results, but they arrived to the conclusion that method B has the lowest uncertainty. In general, the more integrals are used, the smaller is the error. Another interesting study was made by Traficante and Stewart that can be used in quantitative carbon-13 NMR. They found that it is possible to increase the sensitivity or signal noise radio of an spectrum in 31% if it is used an integral accuracy of 90% instead of 99%, as it is shown in this graphic. This small sacrifice in integral accuracy will achieve a sufficient improvement in signal noise radio to produce a better overall result. If we do not need that 100% of the spin return to equilibrium, then the relaxation delay can be reduced, reducing the time of the scan. They show through this second graphic that using a 90% integral accuracy, the pulse angle will be of 74 degrees, and we can use a time between pulses of two times T1 instead of five times. If we consider an ethylene one xin copolymer, in which most of the relaxation times of the polymer chain were inferior to two seconds, we could use a relaxation delay of four seconds, two times two seconds. This would reduce significantly the time of an analysis. In this case, we should avoid to take the integrals of the terminal groups or the methyl of the branch that have relaxation time superior to two seconds. To finish these considerations on quantitative carbon 13 NMR, it can be said that the uncertainty in determining the sequences concentration depends on the separation of peak or resolution, signal noise radio or sensitivity, that it can be increased with increase of the scan number, but this, on the other hand, increases the analysis time. So there is always a compromise to be done between the spectrum quality and the analysis time. I resume 
to obtain a quantitative analysis in carbon-13 NMR, the following consideration can help. Use of a paramagnetic substance in controlled concentration. It is convenient to use NOI because it increases the signal noise ratio. Use a temperature and solvent appropriated. Relaxation delay adequate. 90% integral accuracy, increased signal noise 31% and led to use lower relaxation delays. Use the maximum of integral as possible for each determination. Thank you.